हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द थायरोग्लोसल सिस्ट सो थायरोग्लोसल सिस्ट इज ए मिडलाइन स्वेलिंग मिडलाइन नेक स्वेल मिडलाइन नेक स्वेलिंग इज बेसिकली ऑफ थ्री टाइप्स वी हैव मेनली रेनुला रेनुला इज ए मिडलाइन स्वेलिंग अलोंग विद थायरोग्लोसल सिस्ट थायरोग्लोसल सिस्ट and we also has subhyoid bursitis subhyoid bursitis bursitis these are three main midline neck swelling midline neck swelling okay but today our topic of discussion is thyroglossal cyst so thyroglossal cyst is a midline neck swelling and to, to understand the thyroglossal cyst we should understand the thyroglossal tract which extend from the foramen cecum suppose this is a foramen cecum and here is the hyoid bone and here is the thyroid gland suppose this is the thyroid gland so thyroglossal tract extend from foramen cecum to the isthmus of the thyroid gland this is the isthmus of the thyroid gland this is the thyroglossal tract so thyroglossal cyst is basically this thyroglossal tract disappears and only the epithelial tissue which remains sometimes may form the cystic tissue within the tract the swelling can occur anywhere along the tract it could occur here 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 but the most common site being the subhyoid this is the most common site of thyroglossal cyst this is the hyoid bone this is the hyoid bone and the most common site is subhyoid the site this is the most common site other site could be the suprahyoid or in the region of foramen cecum or it could also occur in the floor of the mouth okay and then the how it is congenital swelling so it is a congenital swelling but the most common age of presentation is 15 to 30 years 15 to 30 years okay 15 to 30 years and uh, this swelling is painless and it moves with movement can occur with protrusion of the tongue it is important to differentiate it from other swellings it can move with the protrusion of the tongue and it can also move with swelling it can move with swelling as well movement can occur with these two condition and we all know that it is a midline midline swelling and cyst this cyst can be move sideways but it cannot be move vertically this is another important point and it is lined by pseudo stratified it is lined by pseudo stratified columnar and squamous epithelium it is lined by pseudo stratified columnar and squamous epithelium and it is it also has some thyroid tissue heterotrophic thyroid tissue it also has thyroid tissue in it in 20% cases okay then the complication can occur in complication which are seen in it is we can see recurrent infection within the cyst recurrent infection can occur and this cyst may burst open through skin leading to the formation of thyroglossal fistula thyroglossal fistula can also form thyroglossal cyst is a congenital condition while thyroglossal fistula is an acquired condition 
it can occur because of two reasons one is because of the recurrent infection fistula can form another is while operating or removing the cyst and uh, if the cyst is not completely removed fistula tract can form within it and another important very important complication papillary carcinoma though rare can occur with thyroglossal cyst and treatment of choice for both fistula and uh, Thyroglossal cyst is cyst trunk operation is cyst trunk operation cyst trunk operation cyst trunk this name is very important cyst trunk operation we do in it we remove whole of the thyroglossal tract along with the central part of the hyoid bone and also the cyst we remove the cyst which is there this is the treatment of choice for thyroglossal cyst. Thank you.